Hello and welcome everyone to our latest series on interpretation of CT scan of lung. The first part is on the anatomy of the lungs. So good knowledge of lung anatomy is mandatory to understand the CT features of lung disease. It permits a better understanding of the CT features of the disease that is the appearance pattern and it helps to understand the specific distribution of the lungs of the disease process like this is the distribution pattern now coming first to the basic anatomical considerations that is the anatomical organization of the tracheobronchial tree the tracheobronchial tree has 23 generations starting from the trachea ending in the alveoli so first there are bronchi which are the segmental, segmental. The difference between a bronchi and a bronchiole is the bronchi have cartilages, while the bronchioles do not have cartilages. Now, there is also a differentiation between large airway and small airway. Small airway is something which is lesser than 2 to 3 millimeters in internal diameter. Here we can see the various generations starting from the trachea with a diameter of 25 ending in alveoli. Coming next, to the anatomical organization of the blood vessels. We must remember that all the arteries follow the bronchioles and the bronchi and they divide along with them. But mostly there are an uh, increased number of arteries which branch out. So there is always a supranumerical artery which is branching out. So the number of arteries is always slightly more than the number of bronchioles that are branching. And the veins, they follow the interlobar or interlobular septa and finally there is a capillary network around the alveolus. Now coming to the lymphatics there are two divisions the one that follows the bronchioles and the other which follows the septa. Now coming to the pulmonary interstitium but the pulmonary interstitium is the supporting tissue of the lungs and it can be divided into three components that communicate freely. The first is the peripheral connective tissue, the second is the axial connective tissue and the third is the parenchymatous connective tissue. Here we see the part that supports the bronchus and the artery is the axial connective tissue. The part which follows the outside of the lungs that is the septa is the peripheral connective tissue. Finally we have the parenchymatous connective tissue inside this place. Now again one more diagram which shows it in a coronal section. Here we see the one is the peripheral connective tissue with the pleura and the septas. Then the axial which follows the bronchus and the arteries. And finally we have the parenchymatous which is noted here as number three. If we see in the lungs, this one is the parent, uh, peripheral connective tissue. This is the axial connective tissue along the bronchus. And finally, we have the parenchymatous tissue inside this place. Here we can see the peripheral connective tissues which are going in various places. We have these septas. Now coming to the subsegmental structure of the lungs. This is very important and this is the place where we need to find the disease process. So the lung basically has three subsegmental portions. The first one is the primary pulmonary lobule. This is defined by Miller as the lung unit distal to the respiratory bronchioles. Now the primary pulmonary lobule consists of alveolar ducts, alveolar sac and alveoli but it is too small and it is not visible in a CT scan as a separate unit. And according to White, approximately 30 to 50 primary pulmonary lobules can be found in one secondary pulmonary lobule. Coming next is the asinus. This is the portion of the lung distal to the terminal bronchiole and it is supplied by a first order respiratory bronchiole or bronchioles. Now 
the reported number of asini in one secondary pulmonary lobule varies considerably in different studies but it is somewhere around 3 to 12 again this is also quite small and it is not visible in a normal ct scan that we see the diameter of the sns is reported to be between 5 to 10 millimeters now coming to the most important thing and the lobule that is actually visible in the ct scan and which will help us in finding out the disease process it is the secondary pulmonary lobule so it in a ct scan what we look for is a secondary pulmonary lobule this is defined as the smallest unit of the lung structure marginated by a connective tissue septa the secondary pulmonary lobules are demarcated from each other by interlobular connective tissue now here we see there is this interlobular connective tissue the septa while we have the axial portion which is has a bronchiole and the arteries with its connective tissue finally we have the parenchymatous connective tissue so this structure is what is the smallest structure which is seen in a ct scan and which will help us ultimately in diagnosing a disease process now this has three important components as i said the first being interlobular septa this place the second is the centrilobular region this place and finally is the lobular lung parenchyma so the distribution of the disease will tell us which disease process is going on now coming to the relationship between the anatomy and the distribution of the disease now inhaled diseased particles can theoretically be deposited everywhere in the tracheobronchial tree however often there is a preferential deposition along the respiratory bronchioles the collateral air drift is thought to prevent or to minimize atelectasis secondary to obstruction of a terminal portion of the airway by providing an alternate route for air to reach the lungs distal to the obstruction so many of the times you will not find that whole of the secondary pulmonary lobule is collapsed there will be some portions which are still having some air this is mainly because of this collateral air drifts this is through the pores of the cone or the canals of lambert these are channels which allow the air to grow from one secondary lobule to another in spite of obstruction the pathological processes involving the pulmonary artery and the capillary such as the pulmonary infarction and pulmonary hemorrhage initially can present as a finding of the alveolar disease because as the distribution is primarily central you will find it just like you find a case of pneumonia the disease will start from the center and start going outside now the diseases that cause interstitial abnormalities fibrosis will produce thickening of the septa and the alveolar wall and the perivascular connective tissue so you will find it mostly in the peripheral interlobular septa since the pulmonary veins run in the interlobular septa it is to be anticipated that the disease process involving the pulmonary veins also will initially appear only in, as an interstitial abnormality because again since they are along the interlobular septa the disease will also be look like something abnormal with the interlobular septa even though the problem is with the pulmonary veins now coming to the ct features of the normal lung large arteries and bronchioles the large pulmonary arteries and bronchioles normally appear as rounded or elliptical on ct when imaged at an angle to the longitudinal axis however they can appear cylindrical if imaged along the axis whether a normal airway is visible or not on a ct scan depends on its size on the ct technique that is used as a general rule airway always less than 2 mm in diameter closer to 1 to 2 cm from the pleural surface are below the resolution of any ct imaging the presence of visible bronchial structures in the lung periphery that is within the 2 to 3 cm of the chest wall signifies pathologic bronchial wall thickening 
or ectasia of the small airways which means that if you find any bronchial structure within 3 cm of your chest wall it means that there is something wrong with the bronchus although expiration has an important impact on the diameter of the trachea the anterior posterior diameter can decrease up to 32 percent between deep inspiration and deep expiration due to invagination of the posterior tracheal membrane however these effects are more reduced in the lower bronchi. here we can see that the bronchus they appear as circular or elliptical when cut along the longitudinal axis and if they are cut along the axis they can appear as cylinder same with the arteries they can appear round or elliptical or they can appear even cylindrical so it just depends on which axis they are being cut now coming to the secondary pulmonary lobule which we need to search for the centrilobular arteriole presents as a dot like structure here you can see it presents as a dot like structure and there is linear or branching opacity within the center or for lobules abutting the pleura about one centimeter from the pleural surface so you can see these dots and they are surrounded by this interlobular septa now coming to the lung parenchyma how it will look the density of the lung parenchyma should be of greater dense opacity than the air so it doesn't appear totally black it should be slightly less this density is determined by three components the first is the lung tissue here you can see this is the lung tissue and the other is the blood in the small vessels and the air present so it is the combination of the lung tissue the large blood vessels the blood and the air that is present which will give us a resolution of how much gray my ct scan will be the more the air the more blacker the image will be and more we find the lung tissue or blood the more whiter the ct scan of that place will be the other thing is we can see that as the lung becomes more dependent we will find that the dependent portions of the lungs will be slightly more opaque so this is because of the gravity effect of the gravity and the pulling of the blood in the lower part of the lungs so this effect is more pronounced in expiration here you can see this is an expiratory film and you can see that mostly the dependent portions are having increased density well this is limited when the patient inspires here as you can see once the patient has inspired this effect is almost gone you cannot find a gradient of that opacity in these films so this is something which you have to keep in mind so that's it for our presentation now this is a ct scan so if you find something important in this ct scan please comment below thank you for your patience and check our website for further information